What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Sergeant Moose here, back with another Evil Dead the Game video. And today, guys, I want to talk a little bit about David Allen. So, we just finished up our Mia video. I hope you guys enjoyed that on our Mia build. This is our David build that we're currently using right now. Uh, we've been testing him quite a bit today. I've uh, been testing his abilities, and I will say one thing. He is a very solid support class. At the end of the day, he's a solid support. Definitely can't go wrong with using him. Uh, first thing I want to point out, guys, is that he has the highest defense of all support classes. So he is the tankiest support of all four supports, uh, which is definitely a good thing, especially if you want to get in the middle, of, uh, you know, in the middle of battle. He can withstand a little more damage. Um, so first of all, guys, <clears throat> this is going to be interesting. Let's take a look at his abilities. OK, I tested these out. Um, very interesting. <laughs> So he has the Beacon of Hope, which reduces fear for you and any teammates within the flame's aura. Evil units within the aura require an increased amount of infernal energy to possess. So essentially, guys, in a nutshell, David is a mobile fire. He has a, a fire on the fly that he can throw down in the midst of battle. Um, not only does it reduce his fear, but it also... Um, saps the demon of their infernal energy on their possessed units in the process so this requires uh, an increased amount of infernal energy for the demon to possess when inside the aura now if we come down to the level 25 addition to this the boosted beacon it increases the range of the beacon an infernal energy cost to maintain possession within the aura so not only does it cost extra for the demon to possess a demon within the aura it also um increases the cost to maintain um possession as well so looking at that attacking a possessed evil unit within the aura reduces the demon's uh infernal energy so essentially basically everybody jumps on the possessed unit within the aura mobs it attacking it it's probably going to die pretty quickly so everything here it sounds good on paper with the boosted beacon and the beacon of hope um, however, I'm, I'm going to be real with you guys. I do not think this is a good ability. I really do not think this is a good ability. Aside from it being able to bring down you and your team's fear, like a mobile fire, kind of like support Ash has, um, only it works slower, obviously. But aside from it, you know, you being out with your teammates, maybe you spawn on Castle Candor down at Palace Ruins everybody's fear is getting high you pop this fire down get their fear down you know it's it's actually effective um however i think it's other additional uh attributes are not as effective and let me tell you why so when you think of this ability you think okay cool this would work really good inside of the dagger or the pages or even at the dark ones you know the book phase because the demon's gonna have to be in that aura fighting you right well, unfortunately, no, because at the dagger in the pages and the book, the demon gets back um, infernal energy consistently. He doesn't have to go find it. He doesn't have to look for it. The demon just consistently regains infernal energy. So even if you do possess units inside of this uh, beacon and attack uh, teammates, yes, they may be taking you out of your possession faster, However, you're still going to break back up that infernal energy because you're inside of an objective. So you're going to be able to repossess, you know, respawn portals, different things like that. Um, this is where I think this is an issue with this ability because I don't think it's very effective. Now, early game, it can probably more be more effective than late game, especially when you're in them sticky situations. Maybe you're at the top of a tower. Um, you're at a place where... You know, the demon thinks, oh, I, ha I have you. You know, you're, you're caught up here. You know, you and another teammate's caught up here. I'm going to possess something up here. Yeah, sure, drop it and, you know, go ahead and take them out. That might save you. Other than that, if you pop it, you know, while you're running for map pieces or something like that when a demon possesses a unit, he's simply just going to step out of the aura. And he's going to wait for you to get out of the aura too, go on cooldown. Then he's going to repossess the unit and just proceed to attack you like normal. So this is where I think there's an issue with the Beacon of Hope, guys. I do not think it is that great of an ability. Maybe it could be, but I think it needs some changes. One thing that makes David st uh, stand out, guys, um, that makes him not be just a regular support, but actually a pretty effective support, and that is Soda Pop. 
So when David drinks the shimps, he and all, all nearby survivors take less damage for a limited time. So essentially that, every survivor that's affected by his shimps, whenever he drinks one, takes a 30% damage reduction for 30 seconds. The interesting thing about it, guys, is I think it may be bugged, or I don't know if it was intended, um, which would be really interesting if it is intended, but this does seem to stack. So, if you're in the midst of battle, say you're fighting a boss, David pops three or four of these bad boys, you can become almost invulnerable to damage as a team. Um, I don't think this is intended. However, if it is intended, I mean, you still have to spend all of those shems to make this happen for 30 seconds. So once that 30 seconds is up, you know, you've just exhausted a ton of shems to be able to do that. And of course, we know shems can be very difficult to come by, especially with him, because not only does he need shems for soda pop, but he also needs shems just for general healing for his team. Um, so it's an interesting ability. It is awesome. It works well. And I think this is the saving grace for David as far as support classes go, making him not just a typical support class. So coming down here, guys, we have the nail gun mastery. Not much to say about that. I mean, David is a support, so nothing massive with range there. Of course, the nail gun, in my opinion, is a really good weapon, though. Uh, great for headshots, things like that. And if I'm looking for any weapon with David, it is definitely the nail gun first things first. Um, let's come over to our skill tree, guys. Basic, very, very basic uh, support skill tree. We want to get, it, it basically focuses on getting as many shemps as possible, as many amulets as possible, and supporting our team as much as possible. Um, so we got shemps plus, which gives us 30% uh, more health. Coming over here, uh, artful dodger, we got one. Increases the balance bar from melee, we got one. Just bridging over here. We go, we're we going all ranged with David because of the nail gun mastery. Um, again, he's a support, so he doesn't really shine anywhere, you know, much in melee or range damage. So we just went the 15 and wig splitter. Um, we also went the 15 and hollow points, so headshots will net us a 30% increase in damage with the nail gun, which does show. Um, it's not, it's still not overly affected, effective, I should say, but it is, um, it is effective nonetheless, especially if you have a good team around you. Um, coming down here two long life batteries just had to pick that to come over here we get two more amulets uh, so we can carry a total of six amulets coming down here this is just basic guys pretty much uh, first aid uh, maximum shemps increase so we can carry up the six shemps uh, start the match with an additional two shemps and we want to go a little bit for ourselves so we took our health up to 25 percent um Nothing really flashy about this, guys. He's just your typical support. You know, feels kind of like Cheryl or, you know, support Ash. You know, Cheryl with less shemps and, you know, the passive or should I say the active ability heal. But, I mean, he's, aside from Soda Pop, Soda Pop is very significant. David is, you know, a solid support. And honestly, at the end of the day, guys, I can't, there, there's no going wrong with picking him as a support class over anybody else. If I go into a game in a public match and I see a David's chosen, sure, let's do it, man. We got a good support with us. That's the way I see him. I don't see him as amazing or anything that stands out, but his soda pop is certainly significant. And without the soda pop, I would probably pick any other support over him. <laughs> but uh, because soda pop is such a good ability, he's definitely one that I would think about choosing, you know, before the other ones. So, um, Again, guys, that's what I got on David Allen. Not too much to say there. He's a typical support class. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. If you were to change the Beacon of Hope, um, let me know what you think about Beacon of Hope. Maybe I'm missing something with it. Um, after using it multiple times, I don't see anything very exciting about it. Maybe there's something I'm not seeing. I still have to do some more testing with David. But from what I've seen so far, it doesn't look too amazing. So let me know what you guys think about this video, how you play David Allen. Um, if you got any little tricks up your sleeve as far as how his abilities work and things like that, let me know. But this is what I got. David Allen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. My name's Sergeant. On the next video.